Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the afternoon session of which the City Council Planning Development Control. Um, just for members of the public who joined us, um, you would have been given a sheet um, with sort of various instructions on. I just wanted to highlight the fact that this is being um, recorded and live streamed, and there is also a video recording being made which will be added to the Council's YouTube um, channel after the meeting. Make sure you've all turned your mobile phones off, switch them onto silent. And as far as the fire evacuation is concerned, we're not expecting any um, practice drills this afternoon. If the alarm goes, then it's for real. Um, so we move on to agenda item 11. Case number 21 slash 01780 slash HOU. This is a nine Manning Field, Manning Ford Close, Manning Ford, sorry, Close, Winchester, and it's a two story front extension, roof raising, and conversion of garage, first floor side extension, two story rear straight side and single storey rear extensions, replacement roof, windows and finishes to the external walls. And there are amended drawings and a proposal. The case officer is Marge Ballinger and she's about to give us her presentation. Thank you, Marge. Thank you, Chair. Number nine, make for close. Is shown here with relationship as it's west of Worthy Road. And in this slide demonstrates the staggered positions of the, the dwellings to the east of number nine. And the rear nine made for close. Is shown here with relationship as it's west of Worthy Road. And in this slide demonstrates the staggered positions of the, the dwellings to the east of number nine. And the rear gardens to the, the adjacent slide um, dwellings west in comparison to the site. This slide is a closer view of the site and its position with the road <clears throat> and the dwellings east and west here. There is a, a high hedge road that wraps to the side of your garden of the adjacent dwelling that um, forms part of the front boundary to number nine. The road has a, a gentle slope from west down to east, and this will be demonstrated in upcoming slides. There have been extensions within nearby dwellings of the close, for example, uh, first floor side extensions over these two dwellings shown here. And these are the front and back elevation photos of the existing dwelling. The house currently has three bedrooms, a garage and off-road paved parking. <laughs> the front photo shows the ground, the ground level differences between number nine and adjacent dwelling number 11. The real elevation photo shows how the boundaries are well screened within the rear gardens. And to break down each part of the proposal, um, the proposal includes a two, a front two-story extension out from the existing front gable, not to exceed the building line of the existing garage. And this two-story element is shown here in purple. The original drawings were amended to move the two-story extension from the east side of the house to the west side here. The garage is to have its roof raised for insulation purposes around approximately 70 centimeters, and there will be a parapet wall toward the front of the garage. The garage will then be converted to internal living space. Three off-road parking spaces will be retained along the front drive, and this meets the required parking space dimensions and parking standards. The east side will have a first floor extension above the original garage and the utility utility area here. 
and the front wall of that extension will start back in line with the existing primary front elevation of the dwelling. Shown in yellow here is the first floor extension. The west side will have a, a shallow first floor projection out from an existing bedroom, and that's just demonstrated here on the left. The back and side will have a two store extension demonstrated in purple with a further ground floor extension that wraps around demonstrated in red. The two story side extension will align roughly with the rear gable of number 11 adjacent and the ground floor will not exceed the rear ground floor extension to number 11. Uh, these are the existing and proposed ground floor plans. Rooms will include a separate playroom, snug, study, utility room, and open plan living along the rear of the house. The existing gap along the right boundary will be retained. And the front line of the proposal will be similar to the existing garage line shown here. And these are the existing and proposed floor plans. As mentioned in a previous slide, uh, the west side has a slight cantilever projection, and this is drawn with the recessed windows to bring natural light to one of the bedrooms. The alterations proposed will be a master suite, three bedrooms, and an office. And this proposal includes two separate office spaces as the needs for the owners require home working. Uh, these drawings show the front elevation as compared to the proposed within its setting adjacent to number 11 east and it's shown here in gray. Additional insulation will wrap the existing dwelling and the facing materials with the brick cladding of similar color as this existing buff brick. The brown hanging tile and the stonework will be removed and the proposal will have, include recessed elements to the front elevation, windows and the entrance and the windows and doors will all be modified from white to a dark gray frame. The first floor side extension will be dark gray seat cladding, cladded and a setback near the existing front elevation line of the original gable. And these are the drawings of the rear elevation existing and proposed. The two-story extension will sit slightly forward of the neighboring uh, dwelling's rear wall, and its ground floor does not exceed the ground floor rear extension to number 11, and that is shown here. The front extension design of recessed windows and doors are carried through to the rear elevation. The side extensions are dark gray and are set back from the rear elevation walls and demonstrate subservience to the other proposed elements. This slide is a view of the west elevation looking back east and demonstrates how the dwellings are staggered along the road. And these are highlighted in the background. The first floor window proposed will be obscure glazed and fixed. The roof is proposed as seam zinc and other elements in gray zinc cladding. This slide is a view from the east elevation looking back west with the dwellings that sit perpendicular to the proposal site. Those are outlined in gray. The garage and utility structure will be extended further back at ground floor with a first floor extension above. All side facing windows are to be fixed and obscure glazed. The garage will have its roof insulated and raised approximately 70 centimeters and converted. <laughs> and this will bring the height from its 2.4 meters up to 3.2 approximately. There is a parapet wall proposed along the front, which will be to a height of 3.4 meters. The front two-store extension is demonstrated in the background here. will come forward to meet the, the front building line of the existing gable. Sorry, the front building line of the existing garage structure. This slide demonstrates the street views coming from the west to east. 
Photo one shows the existing hive hedges here um, and trees along the side in the back garden, the adjacent dwelling, obscuring the front garden from this viewpoint of the proposal site. Photo two is a longer view back toward the end of the close, demonstrating the adjacent dwellings in the background and existing planting that's shown along the road. And this close includes five houses along the north side of the close and four other houses along the south. And there's no through access to the front close other than pedestrian. Photo three is taken from the front of number nine, looking back toward the other dwellings. And this demonstrates the staggered and sloped relationship of the other dwellings with the proposal site. And photo four is a direct view toward number nine, demonstrating the planting along the front and the side boundaries. And the slide shows the opposite view from the east end of the close. Oh, sorry, touchy. Slide 13. Uh, opposite view of the the east of the close looking back toward the proposal site, which is back in here. The mixed buff brick is quite consistent within the dwellings along the north side of the road here. Photo five is within the close, demonstrating again, you can see the stack relationship as well as the ground level changes. All the dwellings have full width, uh, upper and ground floor windows to these dwellings on the side of the road. Photo six demonstrates the existing planting along the road here and a closer view toward number 11 and its relationship to number nine, the proposal site. Photo seven is a view from the corner of number, from taken from number 11's drive, looking back toward the proposal site and its site elevation. And photo eight was taken from the proposal site itself, demonstrating how the hedges and planting are shown along both sides of the boundary. The original proposal's drawings were amended to extend along its east side to its west. And I'll, sh I'll show this more in the drawings. The property has proposed to come out in line with this existing garage here. Sorry, I jumped. And this also demonstrates that there will, will be three off-road parking spaces retained, which meets the parking standard Further assessments and site visits were held to consider the relationship of the proposal with the, the adjacent dwelling number 11. The proposed drawing has been included here as reference. Photo 9 was taken from the front drive of number 11, looking back toward number 9. Photo 10 was taken from inside number 11's window and this helps demonstrate the 180 degree view of the full, the full width windows within the dwellings. The entrance to the house is located along the left here. Photo 11 is taken from an angled view inside number 11's house in the front room. The hedgerow sits within number 11's ownership and there is a, a break, I'll show another dwelling other photos coming, there's a, a raising of ground level to the garage compared to the ground of the front garden to number 11. And just to highlight some of the perspective view in detail, the garage is situ situated uh, along higher ground, so I would estimate halfway perhaps up the hedge. And the garage as existing measures 2.5 meters in height. The roof of the garage will be raised approximately 70 centimeters and the parapet wall will come across the garage up 90 centimeters from the existing. The two-store extension will come forward of the existing gable shown here by about approximately 2.25 meters. And the side first floor will come out from the original upper eaves shown here, but will not exceed the side wall of the existing garage. These are further photos to demonstrate the relationship to number 11. Photo 12 shows the existing gated access of number 11 toward its, that utilizes at the, excuse me, 
the existing access that number 11 uses toward its rear garden. And you can see there is a slight, like I said, a slight ground level change at this point to the side of number nine. A new side facing access is proposed to number nine along this elevation. This will be positioned back behind the front wall of number 11 in an approximate location of this existing window shown. Photo 13 is shown again to compare the front and east alterations when viewed from this portion of the road and its relationship to number 11. The first floor site extension will not exceed the existing ground, ground floor front and side walls shown here and to height just above the existing upper eaves of the existing cable. These are rear elevation photos. Photo 14 was taken from the rear garden of the adjacent property, number 11, looking back toward the proposal site. This demonstrates existing hedges to the boundary and a condition is proposed to protect and retain all boundary hedges. Photo 15 was taken from the rear garden of the proposal site. Due to the staggered position of the dwellings, the two-story element proposed along the side is within a similar line of number 11's rear elevation here. The two-story gable portion of the proposed extension will come out a further one meter. Photo 16 is within the rear garden of number nine, showing the side. The first floor extension's height will fill, fill in the gap just above the existing, just to above the existing upper eaves. There are no side facing windows to number 11 and the side gardens used for access only. These are additional photos from the rear garden of the proposal site. Photo 17 shows the hedges and planting along the side boundary, which forms the rear boundaries of the dwellings west. Photo 18 shows the roof ridges just above the hedges and there is a 15 meter gap between the side boundary to the rear, rear of these buildings. Photo 19 shows what the rear boundary is heavily planted with trees and shrubs. And to reiterate, the conditions were added to protect and retain any boundary hedges and planting. To conclude, the proposal is a modern interpretation of the existing building's design. It's considered that the proposal does not have detrimental impact to the character or appearance of the area. The proposal is also not considered to have an adverse impact on residential amenities of occupants of adjacent dwellings, and therefore is in accordance with the policy of the development plan. Thank you very much. So we move on to the public participation and we start with the objector. Mr. William, is it O'Brien or O'Brien? O'Brien. O'Brien, apologies. Um, so the clock is there and when you're ready, um, can you see the clock? Yeah. Um, when you're ready, if you want to put your microphone on, that's, that's it. Yeah, yeah. And you have three minutes when you're ready. Okay. Thank you. Good afternoon. And thank you for giving us time to speak to you today. My name is William O'Brien and my wife Mary O'Brien is here. And I live at number 11, which is immediately next door to number nine. We've lived here for 24 years. Our neighbours moved into number nine on the 21st of March this year, 2021. And on the 21st of June, they handed us the proposed plans. On the 23rd of June, we told them that we would have to object and why we would have to object. It was hard for us to do this because we always want to be on good terms with our neighbours. On the 29th of June, we spoke with Mr. Jones and his architects and listened to their plans and aired our concerns. The 
couple of days later, the plans were submitted, largely unrevised. And our concerns hadn't been addressed. And we sadly have had no communication with our neighbours regarding these proposals since that time. On the 6th of September, which was the closing date for objections and comments, the plans were superseded and revised plans submitted, with no explanation as to what was changed or why. However, looking at the revised plans, our original objections still stood. It was having the same impact on the front elevation of our property, namely overshadowing, overbearing, contributing to loss of daylight and sunlight, and having an impact on the privacy of our lounge front window. To compare the changes made here to the previous side extensions at number 15 and 17, we believe is misleading because they're of a different order and dimension. I could start quoting planning policies and talking about angles and meters added, etc., but I'm just going to say the following. This proposal is to increase the square footage of the current three bedroom property by more than two and a half times. In the future, we're very concerned it could be sold or rented out as a six bedroom property with potential impact on on street parking. And to conclude, we've lived here for 24 years and we have welcomed the many changes to the properties in the close because we believe they've been carried out in a sympathetic manner to the neighbours and to the whole streetscape and nature of the close. We have never objected to any of these changes. However, we believe this proposal is a step change and will have a negative impact and will create a precedent for future developments. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Um, it could be that members of the committee would like to ask you some points of clarification. I think I will start. Um, you, you were objecting to um, loss of privacy. Could you just point out um, what concerns you especially? Well, there was a concern about the additional windows. and We've noticed that some of those windows have been changed to obscure glass. However, the main access, the current access to all the houses in that row are on the north side of the properties. And this was done at the beginning when, when the properties were built, so that people aren't walking past the windows of the adjacent properties. Um, this proposal changes, it, it actually gets rid of the access on the north side of the property completely by expanding into it and changes the access to the south side of the property. Therefore, the, we would see traffic walking past our lounge window. I see. And are you concerned about any windows overlooking you? Well, we have concerns about that, but we believe that they're going to be obscure and non openable. So okay. that's okay. fair enough. Thank you very much. It doesn't look that like there are any further questions. So thank you very much for, to you both for coming along today. Now we move on to one of the ward councillors, Councillor Paula Ferguson. And when you're ready, um, Councillor Ferguson, you have five minutes. <clears throat> thank you, um, Chair, and um, thank you for letting me come to speak about this uh, planning application today for number nine, when you get close. Um, it sits within Bartholomew Ward, which is the ward fortune among one of three ward councillors. I've been contacted by a number of residents in the road and around the surrounding area, including the O'Briens, who were particularly concerned about this development. One of the main issues that they've raised with me is the very scale of the development. And it's already been noted that, that this scheme will in fact increase the house two and a half times its existing size. Um, it will in effect make a six bedroom house, as I'm still sure any estate agent would describe it, although I do know that some of the rooms have other purposes for this family. Uh, one of the reasons stated for the development is to improve the carbon efficiency, you know, and, and of course I welcome that, the um, extra installation, the uh, heat pump, air source heat pump is a good thing. However, this house again will be two and a half times larger 
therefore it will have a much larger carbon footprint which then has to be addressed. Mr O'Brien has spoken passionately about the impact pro proposed development would have on him and his wife. Um, and it should be noticed that when you go into their home, and I was welcomed into their home to take a look, it is clear when you stand in their lounge window that there will be an impact on them. The new, the new extension, because of its nature, will feel um, very big, it will feel overbearing, and for them, people going by, will be a loss of privacy. The fact that their house is set down means that this will loom large um, on their horizon. Um, while I acknowledge that the planning officers consider these issues very carefully, and I do welcome the planning commission conditions that have been proposed, particularly the obscure glass um, and retention of the material hedging in the rear. The fact that there are so many conditions being imposed does really suggest to me that perhaps there is going to be a considerable impact on the O'Briens. Residents have also spoken to me um, about their concern that if this planning application is approved, it will set that precedent that they're really concerned about. A precedent that will fundamentally change the streetscape of Manningford Close and in fact the wider area. Um, they're concerned that these improvements are not sympathetic to the neighbourhood. While I recognise that each application is considered in its own right, in the report the planning officer does note previous decisions in the area and often I feel that these are often cited or used, especially if the planning decision goes to appeal. The danger is if this planning application goes through, it sets that precedent. It will set that precedent that others will rely on should they want to make similar and scale developments. The thing about this particular um, development for this plot, this improvement plan, is that it goes out at the front, it goes out at the back, it goes up, it goes to the sides, it goes to the edges of the plot. So there is a concern, is this the overdevelopment of this plot? And will we then see that in multiple houses elsewhere, up and down the streets, as new people come in? It's absolutely right that every homeowner should have the chance to improve their homes and to apply to make the changes. The issue I have is that if every homeowner went to the absolute max for their plot, then we would have a very different streetscape in this area. Manford Close and the roads around it are one of the few areas in Winchester where you can still get three straight four bedroom houses, which are relatively affordable by Winchester standards, I recognise that. The danger is we could change this neighbourhood to be a place which is just full of very large homes which are crammed in together with lots of extra parking, which in effect changes everything, homes which will be unaffordable. I know you'll consider all these things very carefully today, and I thank you, Chair, for giving me the chance to speak and amplify the very real concerns of many residents in this area. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Ferguson. Members, do you have any uh, points of clarification that you wish to know from Councillor Ferguson? No, it doesn't look like it. Thank you very much for coming along. Um, Marge, anything you want to update us on from what you've heard? Oh, gosh. I'm sorry, Ms. Cutts, but, um I come to you now. So the, the last speaker is a supporter, Louise Cutts, who's the agent. Thank you, Jen. And thanks also to your planning officer for her professional consideration of this proposal. Um, Mr and Mrs Jones are a family like many in Winchester who need to extend their living accommodation to cater for the need for both parents to now work from home. Mrs Jones is employed in the media and the news sector for the BBC and needs an acoustically insulated study. While Mr Jones works in surveying but is also required to work from home on a daily basis. With both parents working and two primary age school children to care for, there is also a need for the grandmother to come and stay regularly. So whilst the proposals may look like a six bedroomed house, what they will be is just a home with sufficient space to suit a small, modern working family. 
Members will be aware that this is in a residential area that's full of homes that have been extended already in a variety of ways, some up to three times their original size, which your planning officer can confirm for you, all with good quality modern architecture that is different from the original homes. The main difference with this extension is that the applicant wanted the resulting dwelling to be as energy efficient as possible. Number nine, Manningham Close does not sit in a conservation area, it's not next to a listed building and therefore it's not constrained by the need to replicate what has gone before. The final designs are modern, they're attractive, they're of high quality and they fit in with the varied forms of housing that are already found within the close. Following the request from your planning officer, the applicant altered the plans in the manner your planning officer sought. This has reduced any harmful impact upon the neighbours. Your officer has professionally assessed the amended proposals and is now happy that they meet your local plan policies. The house to the west, number seven, has a high hedge on its eastern boundary that will screen most of the extension and of course the roof will be angled away from this boundary. The materials, brick and zinc, they're of the highest quality and that they're not uncommon in the area. My clients have been surprised at the level and the tone of the objections, especially from persons that do not live near Manningford Close. At times the Joneses have felt like there was almost a focused campaign against them. Unfortunately, this has led Mrs Jones to speculate whether an element of this objection is related to the fact that the Jones are a mixed race family that have only just moved into the close. Particularly of their, that there have been several relatively similar planning applications approved under delegated powers without any objections. I have assured my client that such objection, even if it's packaged up with something more palatable, would be most unusual and have pointed out the level of support that they have received too. The proposals are for a high quality modernisation of the existing property. The applicant has worked positively with your planning officer to ensure an acceptable scheme that is in full accordance now with your plan, local plan policies. And as such, I would ask that a decision is taken in accordance with your officer's recommendation with any conditions that members would like to add. Thank you. Very good time. Thank you very much. Um, any questions of clarification? Councillor Rutter. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, the um, uh, objector, um, Mr O'Brien, was concerned that the um, cut through around the side of the house has been changed from one side to the other and that this will therefore impact their privacy. Um, can you just explain, is there room to walk down the side of, will there be room to walk down the side of the house? And is the side that you can then walk down going to be changed from one side to the other? And if that is the case, what, what is the existing boundary treatment and is anything being done to, to, um, to, to improve that or to, to make it higher or to, 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 to secure their privacy, their neighbour's privacy? Thank you for this. We've got our architect with us as well to answer some of these questions. But yes, the access is being moved from one side to another. Um, but your officer has considered that that's acceptable. Okay, I'll ask the officer as well. Thank you. Thank you. Any other any further questions? Um, Marge, anything you wish to add? Thank you. Um, it was just mentioned that the, the potential that the number of conditions may somehow reflect negatively on the application. And I would just say with any, any building or extension, we always secure materials. And sometimes in this case, we would require samples. We would like to secure and protect the hedges because they're very important to the area as well as the site and neighboring dwellings. So I don't think the number of conditions is relevant. And I'd also like to say that it was mentioned that this proposal extends to the edge of the plot, but unfortunately, other than the rear elevation, the extensions do not exceed any of the, the front or side building lines. Just want to point that out. Thank you. Thank you. And um, before we go to the report, I just wanted to uh, assure um, Ms. Cuss and um, uh, client, the ethnicity of the applicant is absolutely of no relevant concern to the planning committee. Um, so can members, can we go to the report? 
Um, principle of development is very short, but if you have a question on that, and design and layout, which is page 105, 106. Councillor Pearson. Yes, so um, Marsha, you say in design layout is sympathetic to the local character, and yet the photographs you, you show as illustration are radically different from the design, proposed design of this, this application, which I understand did not receive pre application advice. Was the, so, how can it be sympathetic that it's so different from the rest of energy? The design of the roof and the flat roofs so have been replicated into the, the new design. So, the, the, the dual pitched roof gable facing forward has been replicated as well as the flat roof garage elements have been brought through to frame the entrance as well as the side extensions. So are you also saying there's zinc cladding elsewhere in this particular area? Not on this particular, not on this particular street. Around the corner there have been quite a few modern interpretations of their dwellings, um, whether it be cladding or render, I'm talking about zinc cladding and battleship grey. On this particular street, no, up the up the street is render and vertical timber cladding, but not not the, the dark grey zinc. Mm -hmm. um, um, as we're on zinc cladding, um, sorry, can't delay me because I've got you down. Um, but um, what is the point of the zinc cladding? Am I just old fashioned or is it modern or does it contribute to the sustainability? The, the darker colours are considered more recessive, so having the, the zinc cladding is to highlight the, the brick cladding elements to the, the dwelling and hopefully the, the zinc and the, the other extensions that are cladded and, and such will be recessed back into the more prominent design of the building. I think the view of the zinc cladding, which um, causes me some concern, was the one on the side, which presumably um, the O'Briens will be looking at. Can we look at that on the screen? Yes, that one. So that is, was that what the O'Briens will be looking at? Is that their, their side? So in photo 11, where the gable, yeah. this is the where it is to come out. So from this corner out to the side of the yeah. garage will be the, the dark cladding. But there is quite a lot of dark material there. Isn't there? And the, well, the roof of here will be raised and cladded and the parapet will be brick. The ground floor will be brick as well. OK, thank you. Um, Councilor I think we covered the point, but uh, there doesn't appear to be any other zinc cladding anywhere else around that particular area. Were you wanting an answer to that? that? that we covered that point. Um, we covered the point about the zinc cladding. Okay, right. So you were just commenting. Yeah. Okay. Any further questions on the design and layout? So can we move on then to impact on the character of the area? Page 106-107. Councillor Rota. Thank you, Chair. This also nearly impacts on number 11 as well, so it's, it sort of bridges the two um, next uh, sections. But um, the, this concern about the, the, the the side of the building on which you can access the garden. Um, have you looked at the impact of that access changing from one side to the other on, on the neighbours? And, and do you consider that, that it will have any impact at all? I don't know what the boundary treatment is. Is it a fence or a wall or what's along the side there to, to protect that neighbour immunity? Um, and um, we heard that there's going to be a um, a heat source pump fitted. I can't remember seeing this anywhere in the report, but um, th there's no sign of, of solar panels, for instance, on the roof. I don't know if those are going to be included at all. 
question. Okay. So to address the access, the the side and the front gardens are within the public realm. So moving the side access from one to the next, though might be coming near the front window of the adjacent building, since that's public land and visible in the public realm, it was difficult to challenge that as being private space. And it's a 70, 70 or 80 centimeter access. So, and it's a side access to a utility room. The main access to the building will be to the front. The front. And now we haven't considered any further boundary treatments because I know that the hedgerow is here, so it obviously might impact the existing hedgerow. So that would be something if, if they did want to consider further planting along that boundary. It, it's not part of this application. What was the second question? Okay. Oh, so the heat source pump details have not been submitted because it, we don't have those details yet. That will be come down for the line. But solar panels aren't part of this proposal. Then we move for the old council landing. I'd just like to go back to this is a considerable increase in the size of the building. Um, and we're talking about the heat pump. Now, heat pumps make noise. So we have to where that is going to be sited and are we going to put any conditions on noise on it? There is a condition that the details will include the noise assessment that in order for us to comply with the condition, we'll have to submit that those details to the environmental health team for their approval. Yes, but do we know where the location that heat pump is going to be? Is it going to be near the neighborhood? No, but that will be something that we'll assess because it, obviously if it is near a boundary and the noise levels are exceeding what is proposed, then it would probably be recommended to move it from that, that position. Condition for yeah. Councillor Wesson. Thank you, Chair. Um, a, a question on the overbearing nature of the building. I'm just interested in your interpretation of overbearing. Um, we've heard that it's been extended up and back and front and sides to the no, um, so the overbearing nature of the build, I'm interested in your view that this is not overbearing on the property um, adjacent to that number 11, bearing in mind that, it is, that the actual property number nine has been extended in all directions. What would constitute overbearing? Yeah. And uh, I, I don't understand how you can interpret that when this is at the maximum in probably all dimensions. Thank you. Within this proposal, we consider primary amen amenity spaces. For example, if the front garden were used more as a social setting, um, building close to that boundary might be difficult. But as this is if a front garden within public view and the private amenity space to number 11 is more toward the back, those are the areas that we were seeking to protect for any potential overbearing. Can I have a supplementary question to that please, Chair? Thank you. Um, in terms of the space, um, we've heard that the property is being extended to two and a half times the existing space, and the agent quoted one other property at three times the existing space. Two questions really. One is, um, are you aware of the property that's been ex expanded three times the space and does it have any bearing on this particular uh, application? Uh, and secondly, um, do you consider that uh, if we allow this to go forwards, that this creates a precedent for other properties in this area to be expanded in a similar manner? With, with planning, we, although we look at percentages of building compared to the original, in this case I did not measure, so I have not, uh, I can't authorize whether or not that's accurate. As far as the three times the building, I'm not aware of where that is in location to this proposal site. I know that up 
as you travel Manningford through Stoke in that area, there have been some extensions and, and redevelopment, but I'm not aware of uh, three times the size building. And as far as Crescent goes, this this build, this site is very unique as it's perpendicular to the adjacent dwellings and it's at the end of a row of very similar looking houses. So while there might be a front extension, it's not appearing as as dominant what mostly a front extension would represent due to the high hedges shown as at the boundary treatments. So again, we look at every application individually. And in this case, the site is very unique and I don't I didn't think that it would be an issue. Um, we've also got um, impact on the neighbours to the, the, the east and the west. It could be that you've already asked your questions. If you have concerns about those. Otherwise, um, page 109, the rest of the report, landscape and trees, highway and parking, you'll notice that the update sheet has um, corrected the four off-road spaces to three because of the angle of the drive. And anything else on the conditions? Otherwise, we'll move on to debate. Thank you, uh, Chair. There are a lot of good qualities about this application. Indeed, I rather like it <coughs> as a design. But in this context and the size of this plot, width of this plot particularly, I'm sorry, it just doesn't fit. I agree with the objectives which Ava expressed by Mr. Blair and emphasised by Councillor Ferguson. It is overbearing on number 11, particularly in relation to this zinc cladding. <clears throat> now, I've got a similar building in my own village and it stands out like a carbuncle. It's hated by just about everybody except the person who lives in it and the person who designed it. And I think this is just the same example. It's, it's, it is in, an innovation, yes, as a cladding, but battleship grey. I know we're cutting down the navy, we've got a lot of surface paint, but this is ridiculous. It's, it, 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 it just does not fit in the context of this area. <laughs> Your own photographs that you show in these examples illustrate this. There may be some similar ones, but you've not shown any examples. Um, <clears throat> and it's, as I say, I like the design, but it, it's just wrong in this place. And the fact, I would say to Mrs. Kurtz, the fact that there's an ethnic situation, frankly, I didn't know that until you said it. And to me, it is completely and absolutely irrelevant. I'm talking about the design of this building. And it just didn't fit in this area. It's overbearing, it's outscaled for this plot. The width of the plot is not wide enough for it. While the um, number 11 side hasn't changed, the other side has changed. So access, I've no idea where this um, air pump is going to go, but noise it is an issue. And to say that that won't become relevant after the application is granted, without us having any information. I'm sorry, that leaves us hanging because that might be crucial to some people. Um, as much as I support the equipping of air pumps, and indeed I've got a number within my immediate neighbour, um, but there's plenty of space around these air pumps and noise becomes less of an issue. But in this context, and that, but that's not the crucial thing, it's the sheer size of this, it's the sheer this is ink planning. I'm, I'm, I'm repeating myself. I'm sorry, I can't put it. I just cannot support you on this one, Marge. You know what? It's, I'm sorry. Thank you. Councillor Leaving. Uh, I'd like to thank Councillor Pearson for saying exactly what I was going to say. I think it's extremely overbearing. I think it's out of place. I think it's overdevelopment. Um, and I'm sorry, but I can't go along with this. Thank you, Chair. I think that um, this um, proposal does go to the absolute boundary of what is acceptable and uh, reasonable in this position on this plot. And I can 
completely understand the concerns of the neighbours. But we live in a, a time when people are expected to work from home and still have their families and still have their family life. And to enable that to happen, we have to accept that people will want to extend so that they've got room to work from home um, in reasonable conditions. And that's what this is attempting to do. Um, the existing brick um, cladding is being retained. The, the potentially overbearing bits of the house will be in recessive grey, so hopefully won't, it won't appear to be overbearing. Um, I, I am concerned that, that, that the, land, the land does slope and that does mean that a bigger house will look even bigger because it's higher up on you. Um, and I'm pleased to see that there's a lot of conditions around the boundary treatments and retaining the existing hedging and building that up as well. So I, I did feel very um, conflicted over this one, but I respect the um, professionalism of our officers. I accept that they have worked with the develop with the with the um, owner to to change the design from the original to make it more acceptable. I welcome a much more energy efficient house. These these seventies boxes are notoriously energy inefficient. I share Councillor Pearson's concerns about the possible sighting of the air pump and that that. But I again. I'm happy that our officers will bear that in mind if and when that comes forward. So having been very conflicted over this, I nevertheless will be supporting the officer recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Edwards. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd like to speak in favour of this design, uh, which has been criticised quite strongly around the table. Uh, it seems to me Firstly, I do know this area not well, but I've walked around the street several times, and there are a number in the neighbouring roads of houses that have been imaginatively redesigned. This stands out as egregiously as has been suggested in the way that it was. And it seems to me that in its form, the house does indeed respect the line of houses in which it sits. I expect the architect could say conversation. And I think that the quality of the design is demonstrated not by details such as the zinc cladding about which we may have different views as a matter of taste, but in the way in which it has managed to fit into the site and yet increase the significantly the scale of, of available space. It's the intelligence which it's done it. For example, the sloping windows on the on the front elevation and I think on the rear as well. Uh, the careful avoidance of windows that would overlook the neighbouring properties. Uh, the removal of a garage so I'm always delighted when I see a house doing something more, uh, more beneficial with its space than, than housing the car. So I think there are lots of good things here. Uh, I do accept that it's going to be a larger bulk and that that will have some negative impact on its immediate neighbour, but not, I would suggest, a significant impact for planning consideration. And, and I would commend this proposal and I shall certainly support it. Thank you. Well, Councillor Bento. Yes, I think I'm tempted to agree with Councillor Edwards. Um, I disagree with Councillor Pearson saying it doesn't fill the plot, but the house already fills the plot from width wise. So the great majority of the uh, extensions are going out, out the back end of it, which are invisible to the neighbourhood scene. Yes, there is going to be this part of public garage. I was a bit concerned when I saw photograph 9, which seems to be the view from number 11, which would seem to imply that quite a lot of the 
extension down that side would be visible um, from their from garden. Um, but looking at page 119, sort of scaling there, it would seem that not too much of the that side development is going to be that, that visible from from there. And of course, it's just going to be basically a wall to a wall between those two two, neighbor, two neighbors all the way down that side, which is not a, a sort of usual part of either, either property. Um, so I'm I'm inclined quite to uh, agree with the, the officer's proposal. Councillor Weston. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I, I also think this is a really good design of house and uh, I think it should be commended um, in anyone who's um, trying to take the 1970s property and, uh, and make it work in the, in the 2020s um, deserves uh, all the support we can give them. Um, in terms of its uh, aspiration for energy efficiency, I think that's fine. That lines up with exactly what we're trying to do as a city council going forwards. Um, my, my concern is that, as you you noted during the questioning is, is the uh, the actual clock that's been put on. Um, I think it's pushing the limits of what anybody could do with that plot. It's right on the edge. Um, if I was to not support this, I would need to find a planning reason and it would be along the lines of an overbearing um, structure in the area that it's in. I have to uh, respect the views of our professional planners here, our uh, own department. Um, so, in this particular case, I will be supporting the decision of the officer. But I would like due consideration in terms of the privacy and the access being moved over onto the other side of the building that that is protected for the residents of number 11. If it's all possible, I'm not sure what is possible, but if it was possible, I'd like to see something done there. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> so it's my turn. Um, I'm not supporting the application. I agree with my colleagues who are um, applauding the sustainability, um, and I agree with that, and that is very much in the spirit of what we are trying to encourage. But the cost here is something which is being extended forwards, backwards, up and to the side and um, it just to my view doesn't fit in with a street scene. Um, when I went round um, there were no um, extensions which took away the garage although I understand Councillor Opus was pleased with that um, but the mere fact of making that living accommodation and coming out Lots of people had built on top of their garages in that close, but I couldn't see any properties that had taken that garage away. And by taking it away and then coming forward, it does increase the bulk of it. Um, what I really can't accept, and perhaps this is my age, but the zinc cladding, because the zinc cladding is very much in your face. Um, and it, that's the first thing you see and I think that side wall um, between 9 and 11 is overbearing um, and I don't know what to say anything else. Yes, the fact that it's sloping makes this property as large as it's proposed to be even more um, overbearing so I think it would set a precedent um, and regretfully I can't, I can't support it. Um, to Councillor Cunningham. Thank you, Chair. I think basically everybody uh, has said in turn what I was going to say, but I don't want to repeat anything in detail other than just highlight a number of things that I was concerned about and still am. I find that to, to increase the size of the property two and a half times its original size isn't just up to the limit, I think it's beyond the limit. I think it creates a size, scale and mass which is oppressive in its plot and it's an overbearance on the outlook and the effect of the neighbours at number 11. I don't find it sympathy at all, I find it completely unsympathetic to the character of the area and incongruous in the street scene and not in keeping at all and it gels in the street smoke. So I will be opposing this. 
think if Monty wants to, has had a say. So this application has been um, recommended for approval. Those in favour, please show. Uh, four, Chair. And those against? Five, Chair. So that is um, refused. And we have to now state our reasons for refusing the application. Now, I know, Councillor Leaving, you need to go to go to another meeting up at the county. So thank you. So, um, Mrs. Binnett, the, um, it has been mentioned, the doesn't put in with the street scene. It's overbearing, um, over, over large, overdeveloped, whatever the um, terms are. I, I think personally, and I don't know whether this is a reason for refusal, but by the nature of the amount of seed flooding, it's too prominent in the street scene. Anyone want to add anything? No, I, I, agree, I, agree, I, agree, I, agree. Uh -huh. I I purely think it's overdevelopment. Right. Thank you. That's <clears throat> a nice dump, it's just the wrong location. Wow. <clears throat> it's too big for seed. So Taylor, did you have uh, I think I've heard some say about impact to neighbours, so I don't know if that's something you want to articulate or if I'm satisfied with the relationship to the neighbour. Well, I, I personally certainly feel that that zinc wall facing number 11 will have an impact. Um, and because the houses are so close together, I can't see how a heat pump will fail to impact noise wise, but that hasn't been determined yet. Um, I think the applicant has tried very hard to ensure the privacy of the, of the neighbours. I'm not sure that. Um, you can make much of that. I don't know what other members think. Oh, there it is. Absolutely. Can you just stay for the voting yeah. on the conditions for the recommended cases? Thank you, Chair. So I've had a, you know, obviously had a look at um, what our policy says, having regard to, regard to what I've heard in the meeting today. Uh, 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 and I wonder if, if you know our answer the rising is based on what I've heard from you, but the reason for future curriculum is something along the lines of the proposal by reason that size and relationship to the occupiers number 11 money first results in and then one overdevelopment of the plot out of character of the appearance and variety of the local street scene in terms of its scale and mass uh, and then two results in an unnamely impact on the occupiers number 11 by reason of the two-story side element by reason of height and materials in the conditions of that occupier, which is contrary in your view to policies DM 16 and 17. But based on what I've heard, Chair, that would be my summary yeah. analysis. Yeah. And then you want to tell me something different. So in the absence of anyone wanting to add anything else, could we just have a vote that those are the conditions for refusal? Um, those could, could you please share? Five, Chairman. And those again? None. Four. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Leamy. So that application is refused for the conditions as stated. Now there will be just a short break um, while we sanitize the spaces. Thank you. 
to the front, you can see the existing roof light would be um, removed or replaced and relocated to a smaller size and an additional one would be included. Um, just at the top above this one, you can just about see the proposed roof lights for the dormer at the rear. At the bottom, you can see the rear elevation with the proposed dormer enlargement. Um, there would be a small vent just behind where the roof light is. It's approximately nine centimetres tall, so it would not likely be visible in the street scene. The first floor proposal can be seen here with a hipped roof in a similar style to what is seen to the rear of other um, dwellings along the road. And the ground floor extension you can see here. Um, just as a point of clarity, the eaves height for this uh, ground floor elevation uh, would be approximately 2.4 metres off the ground. The neighbour at number 43, which would be seen just to the left hand side here, and um, their eaves height is slightly below this at 2.2 centimetres. So there will be a small drop between these heights. However, the um, ridge height for this um, ground floor rear extension would be approximately 3.5 metres. There are two additional windows proposed. Um, you can see one on the south elevation here that would serve the bathroom and one on the door on the rear elevation here. Um, condition 4 on page 139 would ensure that these two are obscure glazed windows to avoid overlooking. Here we have the proposed floor plans. To the left hand side is the ground floor and would extend approximately 5 metres and match the depth of number 43 just to the left hand side here. It would be approximately one metre larger than number 41, which is just seen to the right here. There have been concerns raised regarding the party wall, but unfortunately this is not considered to be a material planning reason, so it's not been addressed within the report. In the centre here, we have the proposed first floor extension, forming part of a bedroom. This would be approximately 2.5 metres from the rear elevation. And on the right hand side is the proposed dormer, second floor layout. There is a cupboard here with the window that is proposed to be obscure glazed. There are also three roof lights, one to serve the stairs here, one to serve the bathroom and one to serve the bedroom. The vent that I described earlier would be located just inside here and would protrude approximately nine centimetres above the roof line. And then we'll move on to some photos. Here we have the front elevation. And on the right hand side is the rear elevation. Uh, just a point of clarification that I mentioned earlier, this is the existing pitch that would be carried around on the ground floor elevation. You can see the slight drop here between the eaves height for number 43 and the eaves height here for number 42. Here we have a slightly different view from the rear showing the neighbouring property number 41 here. This window here is in fact a bedroom, not a bathroom, as I mistakenly put in the report and has been included on the update sheet. To the right hand side here is the view to the rear of Placenta Road. On the right hand, left hand side, sorry, there is a view from the Ginnells. This property here is this application site.
This property here is the application site. Here is number 41. And here is number 42. Number 43, sorry. And on the right hand side is the view of the site shown from Porzenton Road. You can just see the existing dormer here. And a few more views from the Rue Ginnells. You can see some of the existing two story extensions here and some of the existing dorms. And looking down the other way, there are some of the existing dormers shown. There is a large extension here that this forms a, a, a property fronting Clausenton Road to the south. Just before I finish my presentation, I'll run you through the update sheet. Um, so we did receive some additional comments from the members at number 40 and 43 earlier this week. Um, so just to clarify their comments and address those, um, the ridge line for the single story extension would be here at three and a half metres, and the east height here would be 2.4 metres. It would meet the east height of the neighbourhood of number 41 on this side. Um, the first floor window at number 41, as I said, um, serves a bedroom and bathroom. The 45 degree test has been conducted, and though there was a limited impact on this window, it was not considered to be sufficient to warrant a reason for refusal in this case. The additional photographs have been submitted. Uh, so here is the front elevation where you can see the existing um, roof light. This would be moved up and an additional one would be next door to it, just above the gable here. The, on the right hand side here we have an alternate view of the rear elevations along St Faith's Road. I'm not clear on where this photo was taken, though I assume that it's from number 48, which is right at the end of the road. And finally, this is a photo taken from what I understand to be number 40, looking towards the application site, which you can see here. This is I understand a doorway um, from their back door of number 40, serving a hallway into their study. And the proposed first floor extension would extend to approximately this location here. The recommendation is to permit. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Rose. So before I go to the public participation, I forgot to remind people um, members of the public about the sheet that you have been given on the way in. Um, just could I just pick out the fact that this um, application is being recorded and live streamed. Um, in addition, a video recording of this meeting will be added to the council's YouTube channel after the meeting. I'm sure everybody has already turned off their mobile phone or put it on silent and in addition to the fire evacuation procedure, is that we're not expecting any practice alarms this afternoon. So if you hear an alarm, it is the real deal. Um, so we move to the um, public speakers. And the first speaker is Mrs. Carrie Lowe, who's an objector. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And so the clock is there. Can you, can you see the clock? Do I need to put the microphone on? Or does it oh, yes, please. Yes. Sorry, it doesn't you just press the button and it will come on. Yeah, Thank that's you. now on. And the clock is there and you have three minutes. And when you're ready, please don't. We own the next door property at 41 St Place Road. We've been asked by other neighbours to represent their views. 
Firstly, I must highlight factual inaccuracies in the officer's original report and subsequent update sheet, which are misrepresentative and therefore misleading to members. The officer has noted our factual concerns as material to the decision and advised us to raise these at committee. Together, these are subject to a formal complaint on the basis of failures in standards of work and in the administration of procedures. We want to support the applicant in seeking more light and space at 42. However, we have serious concerns regarding the wrong heights as stated in the report and update sheet. The ground floor shape is completely out of character and should mimic others in the immediate area. The proposals show that it's designed as half of a twin pair development that doesn't exist, leaving a half built appearance. A hip roof would provide exactly the same habitable ground floor space and be sympathetic to the surrounding area, which the planners have worked to maintain with other ground floor extensions in this run of terraces. The proposal shows a huge three-storey extension in a comparatively complex space in a high-density neighbourhood. The depth of the first floor is disproportionate and should be reduced. The closest window at number 41 is to a bedroom and not a bathroom. The applicant has not submitted light and shadow assessments. The officer has failed to follow BRE 209 guidance to demonstrate the impact on 41. The 45 degree test conducted by the officer for the update sheet was done only reactively and rapidly following our informal complaint on Monday. The officer describes glimpses of the dormer roof line between houses. This is false. The images in the update show full public uninterrupted views of the whole roofscape for nearly 25 metres from Forzentum Road to the south. The dormer size and zinc covering, described as delicate and sympathetic, are ugly and out of keeping with the area. Neighbours on Clausentum Road will see these two metal boxes, akin to shipping containers, every day. A full width, full height, slate clad dormer would complement the existing roof line and provide exactly the same habitable space. The second dormer is intended to be covered space. A window is unnecessary, reduces storage, and is out of keeping with the fenestration of the first floor. Should you recommend keeping the proposed dormer structure, please condition that the window must be removed entirely. If members allow this case to proceed, irrespective of our formal complaint, we ask that our concerns are addressed through the following four conditions. Ground floor roof to be hipped. First floor depth to be reduced. Dormer to be single, full height, full width, slate clad. If second dormer is approved, window to be removed from covered. I'll have to stop you there, I'm afraid, because you're three minutes off. But thank you very much um, for your contribution. And it could be that the members will bring out anything else in the report that we want to say. Members, do you have any further questions? Councillor Rocha. Yes, and um, you were were you in full flow with um, requested conditions? Um, was, there, was there a fourth condition that you wanted to see? Please, um, that if the second dormer is approved, that the window is removed from the cupboard. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Ms Lowe, could I ask you, um, what do you feel, given that we now have the update sheet from the case officer, what do you feel is still inaccurate? Um, it's with regards to the height um, aspect, uh, that that um, the, the, the height of the uh, at number um, 42 is higher than those existing extensions at, at number 43 um, and number 41. Um, so that that is inaccurate. Thank you. Is that it? Uh, yes. Thank you. Um, so the next speaker is a supporter. And applicant, Mrs. Sophie Beer. Good afternoon. Afternoon, thank you. Um, so, clock there, uh, you have three minutes when you're ready. Thank you. I would firstly like to thank the committee for the opportunity to speak today on behalf of our family in support of our application for planning. We would like to express our strong desire to be allowed to develop our property in line with other properties in the immediate area to increase the living and storage space for our growing family of four. Both our children attend the local school and we have a strong commitment to the local neighbourhood. 
Having revised our application to address the concerns of our planning officer, we feel that this revision reflects similar projects at ground floor, first floor and second floor level to properties in the immediate vicinity on St Face Road and Clawcenton Road that have been granted planning in recent years. We would draw the committee's attention to numbers 28, 29 and 30 Clawcenton Road who have recently completed ground and first floor extensions with similar designs to our application. In addition, several properties on St Face Road have been allowed to develop their properties in a similar way to our submitted plan and this includes numbers 31, 32 and 28 who the committee will be aware have been granted permission to extend their lot space more substantially than our proposed application. The loft developments of these houses, we feel, are no less visible to the local community via the service alley between St Faith and Clawcenton Road or the wider conservation area than our proposed loft development would be. It is our feeling also that our proposed planning application, if granted, will significantly enhance the aesthetic of the rear of our property, which is looking tired in places and has exposed downpipes visible to all. In summary, we are a growing family of four, committed to the local neighbourhood, looking to extend our property in a sympathetic and similar way to other families in this area of Winchester, and hope that the committee can see that our application has been revised and is consistent with similar permitted developments on the road. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor, any questions of clarification? I, I have one, um, Mrs. Beer, and that is the cupboard at the front, um, which you can't see, but um, oh, there we are, it's at the top of the stairs. But it's got the cupboard's got a door on it, but it's got a window in it as well. So is that a bedroom? Or? It's, a, it's purely for a, for a cupboard, um, but to allow more light upstairs. Okay, thank you. So I think that's it. Thank you very much for your contribution. Thank you. And then we anything you want to say, Rose, in what we've heard? No, thank you, Chair. Um, did you want to comment um, about um, Ms. Blow's um, comment about the height? Thank you, Jane. Um, so in regards to height, um, I have discussed this with the neighbours. I understand that the issue is that um, the proposal or the um, existing extension at number 43 shown here and um, the east height here is at 2.2 meters and the east height as proposed on number 42 would be at 2.4 meters so there would be a slight raise there however the ridge line at number 43 would be at four meters where the proposal at number 42 would be would flatten out at 3.5 metres. So I've uh, made the conclusion that 3.5 metres is lower than the two on either side, which are around 4 metres both sides. Thank you for that clarification. So we'll, we'll go to the report. Um, the principle of development was chosen in the settlement boundary on page 136, but do ask that to be one question. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. My question relates to something which comes before the service brief development, which is the consultation from the service lead for built environment, historic environment, um, who is actually opposing this, uh, objecting to it. Now, normally, um, an objection for, from our historic environment officer in a lot of cases would be enough to trigger um, an, an objection, a, a refusal. So could you just, um, and also I see that the Coast City Winchester Treasury is also objecting to the proposal. So could you just explain to me um, how, how that objection or that, 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 yes, that objection is being overruled in this case? 
Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you, Jen. Um, in this case, um, I did consult the Historical Environment Officer, and they did feel that um, the proposal was harmful to the conservation area. My personal assessment after being out on site and seeing the area in context was that there, what was being proposed was very much in line with what had already been achieved throughout the rear of the place road. Um, and while it would be visible within glimpses along the road, especially from the Ginnells and from various glimpses along Paul's End to the road, the harm had very much already been done. And therefore, while I understand the conservation officer's point of view, I don't consider that this proposal would be out of keeping with what has been done to the rear elevations of these terraces within the conservation area already. So, shall we move on? Then there's page 136 is a list of key issues. Any questions or comments? Could I, could I ask, um, Rose, I, I, I looked at it from the point of the beginning, would you say that um, in the last, what you've already said, um, would you say that this um, proposal is any more overdevelopment than what has already gone on and has got permission? Thank you, Chair. I would say it's a matter of fact and degree. The proposed dormer is, is um, smaller than some others that have already been granted permission and have been built out. Um, the proposed ground floor is roughly in keeping with what has already been done up and down the road. The first floor is slightly larger, however, this has been assessed and it is considered to be acceptable. So I in my um, assessment, it would be in keeping with what has been done in the area and is in keeping with the current character of the conservation area. Thank you. Um, Jen, you any more questions? So moving through, moving through the report, impact on neighbour amenity? Page 137. And other matters, including the conditions. So, Dibbot. <clears throat> Shall I start? Um, the, if you look at the back of all these properties, from the front they just look like that, you know, but if you look at the front, and I don't know if we've got a shot, that's one of them perhaps, they all, nearly all, have developed mostly upwards because that's the only place they can go, but some outwards at the back as well. So, in my personal opinion, I can't see that this demonstrates any more harm than what has already gone on and has got permission. End of statement. <laughs> any, any further contribution? Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I think I'm going to have to agree with the Chair that, um, <laughs> as you so succinctly put it, the harm has already been done. Um, this, this does not appear to me to be um, uh, any bigger of a, an extension, perhaps at the first floor level. But again, it's been considered by our officer professionally, who doesn't consider that it will be um, an issue um, to the neighbours. Um, so uh, I think normally I would, you know, see that the, the, the objection of the uh, historic officer would be enough to, to refuse an application like this. But I think I agree with with our officer that, that, that 
given the whole context of this area, which is now very well developed and, and close, everybody's close anyway. I can see that, that neighbours would be particularly concerned because they are so close. But then again, you look around, so many of them have built out and up and as long as the front of the, the, the streetscape is, is retained, I think what goes on at the back um, is um, this, this, this pretty well fits in with what else has gone on in, in, that, in that area. So I will be supporting the officer recommendation. Thank you. Sorry. Um, I think we're at the point of voting. Um, I think this, uh, well, this application has been recommended for approval. Those in favour, please show. That's eight unanimous for chair. Thank you. So that application is approved. I don't think we've got any extra conditions. And so that application is approved. Thank you very much. And that brings us to the end of the afternoon session. Thank you. Thank you very much, members of the public, for coming along. Thank you.